Hello again and welcome. This is Robert Shine, Managing Director and Partner of Blanky Shine Wealth Management. Today is Monday. It's November 2nd. Happy November. We've made it. Uh, 2020. And we've got a lot. We're at the eve of the election for the presidency of the United States and so much more underneath that. So we'll talk about that. Election scenarios. We're also going to discuss, this is a Fed week as well as earnings. And my final topic of the day, grumpy old men. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. So if you follow along, uh, we've been updating here at Blanky Shine Wealth Management for our clients, uh, election scenarios. We're finally here. I know we're almost all of us are exhausted. So all we want is ultimately an outcome. And one thing's for certain, we will have an outcome. The question is, we don't know when. Now keep in mind the Masters is coming up pretty soon, so we might not we, we might not have an election outcome for President of the United States, but we might know who might be winning, uh, you know the Masters tournament, let's say, by the first couple of rounds with some certainty. I think that's what we're gonna see and experience over the next couple of days. So don't hold your breath tomorrow. Election day is upon us. Expect volatility. Uh, here at Blanky Shine Wealth Management, we have election scenarios. We have a playbook. We've had uh, all of our clients have access to it. If you need it again, if you want sort of our thinking uh, in terms of positioning, whether we have a red wave, a blue wave, anything in between President uh, you know, Biden or President Trump, uh, any election outcome, we are prepared and we've prepared our portfolios and our clients uh, as well as their, their goals and needs and, ev and, and lining that up in every which way. So we can navigate through whatever comes our way. We've done this for many, many decades now and uh, we've seen different administrations, we've seen different taxation strategies. Uh, but that's why clients look to us so to navigate through sort of all that uncertainty. But then when it becomes certain, we sort of know exactly uh, how to play it out for our clients here at Blanky Shine Wealth Management. So we got the election scenarios dialed in. If you need the election update manual that we've already created, uh, please you know email any one of members of our team here and we'll get our election scenarios out for you to review. So this week is Federal Reserve Week. They're gonna give us some guidance and maybe some insight. And I fully anticipate, especially in the wake of maybe uh, a, an election sort of uncertainty this week, because uh, keep in mind, ballots are still having the ability to be counted after the fact in some different states, and it's all different uh, across the United States. So uh, don't hold your breath on that one um, in terms of an election outcome right away. We're, we're not here at Blanky Shine Wealth Management. We're sort of bracing for that volatility. That being said, Federal Reserve is going to be key this week as to what they say and what they're also going to predict in terms of providing more support, lending and spending is essentially the name of the game here, uh, and, and, and where they're going to specifically help out. That being said, the Federal Reserve is gonna be the backdrop of the economy as we're waiting for Congress or a lame duck session after Tuesday to maybe pass stimulus or additional uh, support that's needed on small businesses as well as unemployment assistance. We don't see that happening under the lame duck session. We could see something in, in January itself, but all, all measures of the economy, if we look at the economy very specifically, Right now, admit in the midst of stimulus sort of winding down, right, in this summer and unemployment winding down this summer, um, personal income rose uh, 0.9 tenths of 1% in September. Uh, consumer spending rose 1.4% uh, month over month. Consumer uh, University of Michigan consumer sentiment uh, rose uh, in the month of September, which was incredible. And for the month of October, we just got the reading extremely strong data uh, for the uh, ISM, it's, so it's the manufacturing data. And anything over a 50 or above, that means that your economy is expanding, right? We just got 59.1, which is a blowout number for the month of October. Huge surprise, so strength. Markets are up today as a result of that. So everything that I just discussed as it relates to economics and the foundation of the economy is intact. You layer on uh, what we're gonna see from the Federal Reserve, and then you have some certainty post-election with some additional stimulus. And that's when we will get the CARES 2.0 Act or additional stimulus to help uh, uh, those that are in need, and that's gonna happen in January. Now let's pivot to earnings. So we've got a strong economy. We know that we can survive through a pandemic in terms of corporate earnings and even the consumer. Consumer's actually doing quite well, especially with the government assistance. Let's go turn to the board right now and take a look here. This is S&P 500 forward earnings in the next 12 months. So if you recall coming into this year, the S&P 500 
uh, forward earnings kind of tapped out, topped out about a 175, okay, 175 dollars, sort of in terms of their blended earnings um, for the S and P. So that's right up here. So the earnings curve went down in terms of estimates as the market bottomed in March 23rd of 2020. And then we've got uh, earnings per share low estimates bottom this May, May 15th of 2020. And then we have the, the earnings steadily have been increasing. But what's more importantly is in the third quarter right now, the earnings reports that we're getting, uh, we have actually had a record number. 86% of the S&P 500 are beating their earnings estimates. That's the greatest percentage on record where over well over two thirds of those companies have beaten the earnings expectations. Now take a look at this. We're at a, a, a 160 right now in terms of S&P blended forward earnings. That's about $2 less than you would see for the all full in 2019. If we go back to 2019, you're about 162. So we're on our way back. The trend is our friend here in terms of earnings. The estimates are coming in. Corporations are making money uh, even in the midst of a lockdown or shutdown, potential another slowdown. Uh, that's the biggest part of this story here is the resiliency of corporations. This trend is going to continue, okay? The corporate earnings story. And that's ultimately, folks, what drives the market. Markets pay attention to the earnings. It only matters. That's what keeps markets where they are. It keeps markets growing higher as earnings grow higher too. And so this is a a very important trend when people ask us, gosh, are we going to have an election and I'm worried about this, this you know, president versus that president and this Congress versus that. Relax, we're going to be okay because we have a solid U.S. economy. Now, one policy could be different than the other. One can slow down the earnings trajectory and growth, right? A subset of policies, raising taxes, so on and so forth. But ultimately, corporations figure it out whether they will have to do business here or they take their business across, you know, uh, outside the United States where they're more favored by a, sort of a lower tax rate, if you will. We saw it happen even a few years back, right? So when taxes are low, it doesn't have to be in this, the US. It could be somewhere else across the United, or, or outside the United States. And we might just see that play out after Tuesday, who knows? That being said, corporate earnings are intact, they're solid. This is an all time greatest percentage beat, 86% of all reported earnings on record. Uh, and then on the backdrop of all the consumer sentiment, all of the ISM numbers, and everything that we're seeing, including real estate, is extremely solid. So that's the economic outlook that we're paying attention to here at Blanky Shine Wealth Management. That matters for our clients, that matters for our clients' portfolios going forward. And my departing words are uh, grumpy old men. After this weekend, we saw two of our candidates, uh, I'm just gonna categorize them as both grumpy old men. Uh, and, and, and ultimately, we're just glad that we're getting to the finish line of 2020 because watching these guys go back and forth, quite honestly, um, you know, obviously could anger you at times, but I just say chalk it up and just say comical. The United States will survive, we will survive, we will thrive, uh, and we will be strong and resilient. I have faith in that. The uh, forefathers set that up, and we hopefully, ultimately what happens in politics is it really comes down to the center. Even though both parties are very extreme, they're playing to their base. It's their red meat. They have to do that to get their voters to go uh, support them on both sides. But ultimately what we see is even the most extreme candidate, at least history has shown from a presidential uh, history logs, if you will, they, they sort of moderate and go to the center. Um, and hopefully we got a divided Congress because that's what will keep them honest, if you will, and that's what we need. So that's what we're going to look for for tomorrow, regardless of the outcome. But I think we're, we're, we're kind of done with the grumpy old men uh, sort of uh, 2020 that we've seen. And hopefully we have an outcome. So thanks for watching. Take care and uh, be healthy and safe. Take care.